The Solar Victory Cash Cup runs twice a week and is by far the easiest way to earn for players like you and me. The reason for this is because so many people call to the second round and get a chance to earn themselves $100. For example, 11,500 players qualify on EU and 9,000 on NA. This means that it should be relatively easy to qualify and you're almost 100% guaranteed to qualify if you follow these tips. I would really appreciate it if you could like and subscribe and without further ado, let's get into the video. Firstly, I want to talk about the three different parts of the game before moving into more general advice. So for early game, the best place to drop if you're confident in your own fighting is undoubtedly one of the medallion POIs because it means you'll almost always be able to get your hands on the medallion itself. This means you can more easily and confidently fight which will boost your performance significantly. However, if you're less confident fighting, it's not absolutely essential to land on medallion POI, especially after the nerf where they don't heal you to full shield. A good thing to do if you're a slightly less experienced fighter off spawn is to land somewhere passive, loot up a bit and then W key. This means you'll probably be fighting with better loot than if you're going to take a fight off spawn, and it means you can get a medallion even if you didn't land at a boss POI. Secondly, I want to talk about mid game. If you've chosen to play passive, I'll talk about which games to key later in the video, you need to rotate on full dead side, which means rotating around the side of zone closest to the edge of the map, or basically where there are fewer players. This means you're far less likely to get keyed and can get placement points far more easily than if you were to rotate through centre zone. You should carry on doing this throughout the mid game, picking up any loot you find on the way to ensure you have the best loadout going into end game, and farming spare brick and wood if you need. Now if you're keying, playing on dead side is also preferable. This means you're probably going to find players who are doing what I discussed before and are playing passive, which could suggest they're slightly less confident players so the likelihood their easy kills is quite high. Playing dead side is also beneficial for avoiding being third partied because there are so many fewer players than if you're going to be keying on congested side. Another advantage of dead side regarding third parties is the fact that you're only ever really going to get third parties from one direction, which makes it much easier to manage than if you're getting lobbied from all directions. One message I really want to emphasise with this video and something that I think so many players including myself fail to realise is the fact that you can disengage from mid game fights. Continuing to fight is one of the biggest mistakes that any players could make because even if disengaging means you're shambles, being shambles is better than your game ending there and then. Even though it looks like pros never disengage, it's because they know how to win most fights but if they know they're likely to lose the fight they'll still disengage. Linking in with the mid game tips, I also want to discuss mid game objectives. Firstly, forecast towers. They're worth going for if you're a confident fighter as it means you can get a free 3 points and more importantly it means you know where zones are ahead of time and can plan easy dead side rotates to improve your placement within the game. However if you're not as confident a fighter it's only 3 points so it's probably not worth going for it. Even if you are a confident fighter, if you go for the tower and take a lot of damage it's probably better for your game if you disengage and let the other player have it. Secondly, I want to talk about the Rift Island. Now this really isn't worth going for if you're not an incredibly confident fighter because often like 5 or 6 kids end up going for it. To add to this, island fights often end up being a long box fight that goes into storm which means you're at a massive advantage if you have low ping. Now it's definitely worth it if you're confident because it gives you 15 points, although saying this the loot really isn't worth it and there may be a glitch right now which means that any points earned from capturing the loot island don't count. Once again on the topic of mid game I want to talk about caches. Caches have changed a lot since they were last in the game in chapter 4 as they're only blue now, which means if you already have a good loadout and cat metal it's definitely more worth prioritising positioning over going for your cache. However if you're shambles and don't really have any loot it's definitely worth going for because it still gives you a guaranteed 3 minis, big, med kit, a full blue loadout and 200 metal. The metal also means that if you have more than 360 metal it's worth boxing the cache up in metal as you'll gain all of your metal back. Now moving on to endgame, it's really hard to say exactly how to play endgame because everyone is just so different, but I'll give a few general tips. Firstly, the best layer to play an endgame is a relatively elevated one, obviously height if possible but staying on elevated layer even if you're not on height is still a good idea because it means you're less likely to get jumped on and you're probably less likely to be on a congested layer. Also if you're struggling in endgame for mats you need to go for a refresh. Being scared to go for refreshes means you're basically never going to win a game so it's just best to go for refreshes. The best time to do this is when you've got about 20 builds left because it means you can fight other players without having to jump in on the kids which relies on your aim being perfect in a high pressure situation. If you follow these 3 general tips during end game your win rate will increase dramatically. Moving on from the 3 parts of the game I'd like to give some general tips on how to play games in the tournament as a whole. Firstly, should you key your first game? The answer I'd give to that question is it depends. If you're a confident fighter it's a good idea to key your first game because you'll be in low elo so the players really won't be very good and you can get easy points but you have to understand there's a chance you get into a game with a decent player and end up dying. 
If you're not as confident a fighter, playing safe will get you guaranteed placement points and it might not be worth the risk of dying for the few points you'll gain. If you do choose to key your game and die, you may want to key your second game or you might want to play it safe. Keying your second game after dying in your first game is fine, but if you key your second game and die again, I'd strongly advise against keying your third game, because at that point you're just wasting the tournament and it would be better to cut at least some points on the board. If you end up dying many games in a row and have, say, four games left with still an hour and a half of the tournament to play, wait a bit before queuing again. Although this could be viewed as a strategy used by worse players, it works, so you might as well do it. Waiting to queue means you'll get into a lobby with worse players, giving you easier fights and easier points. However, you have to be careful not to get too confident in these lobbies, only key if you need it and don't underestimate the skill of other players and play dumb. Next, I'm going to talk about the optimal loadout to run in these cash cups. Obviously, you'll preferably be running mythic weapons, but if you don't want to land hot or key, this is the general loadout you'll want to run. So, this season it's best if you run a Thunderburst SMG over an AR, but if you want to run a Striker AR, that's up to you. So many pros, including Peter Bott and his almost 40 bomb in Solar Victory Cup Finals are taking advantage of this insane lack of bloom on the Thunderburst and not running an AR anymore. It's probably still worth running the Mythic Striker over Thunderburst though. For your shotgun, this is basically just personal preference. Some pros have been running the Auto, especially the Mythic, and some have been running the Pump. A grapple blade is essential for rotation and for meds you'll need to be running bigs and medkits. Medkits are essential in case the game ends up going to heal off, and bigs are better than minis after the new healing mechanic got implemented, and after the medallion nerf meant medallions didn't heal to full anymore. So, what actually is the amount of points you'll need to qualify to finals? On EU, 81 points will guarantee qual, although it's been as low as 75. On NA, 68 is guaranteed, but it has been as low as 59. Throughout the regions, qual is usually between 50 and 70 points, obviously unless you're on EU. So aiming for about 80 points, wherever you are, will guarantee qual. So, I really hope you've enjoyed that and have found it useful. Please do let me know in the comments if you've managed to call to finals after watching this video, or just generally, because I'd love to know. I'd really appreciate it if you could like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.